Since Golang 122 released, you can now start building your API services with just the .NET HTTP package, without the need for any external packages like RealMux, Fiber, Xi, you name it. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to be building my APIs from now on since Go122. We're going to go over some of the advanced features that might be used in some of the other packages, such as getting path parameters from your handlers, building and using middlewares, declarative methods without the need for those nasty if-else statements that you need to do in the net HTTP package, and how to do subrouting as well. Now, I'm not advocating that you shouldn't use any other external routers. What I'm suggesting is the strategy to go without dependencies until I have a clear reason to add one. Now, this has worked for me before, and this is a bit off topic, but how do you know when should you add a package in a project? And for me, it boils down to two questions, which is, do I or my team have the resources or time to implement that by ourselves? And do I want to maintain this feature implementation in the future? So with that in mind, let's test if we can really replace the other routers with the net HTTP package. So I'm going to try to build this in a way that if in the future I want to replace my routing, I can do it easily. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to create a file called api.go. And here is going to leave the implementation for the API server. So I'm going to create a type called API server. And this is going to be a struct which can hold the address, for example, if you had any other dependencies, for example, database, you could add it here. I'm going to also create a new constructor for this, which is going to return the API server pointers. And let's just return it like so. And here we're going to take the address as a parameter and we're going to set it like so. So here on the main, we can actually go ahead and create our server and pass in the address. And now we need to run our server. I'm going to call this run. Let's go ahead and create our run method. And it's going to return an error. So here, let's use the HNET HTTP router. So it's going to be HTTP.NewServeMax. Let me just create a new server here, HTTP dot server and I'm gonna pass in here the address and the handler is going to be the router actually here needs to be others the end we can just do server dot listen and serve then finally I'm going to add here a log so we know when the server has started all right so let's create for example a handler it's going to be slash users slash user ID. So this is the path parameter. I'm going to show you how we can now access these parameters in the endpoints. So what we can do now to get the user ID is that you can go here to the request and get the path dot value. You can get the name of the value that you wrote, so user ID. And then let's quickly write this to the output response. And if you check the documentation, there are here some special cases. For example, if you, if you use this special wildcard, it only matches the end of the URL, for example, this pattern. And there is a lot more here, but the basic idea really is that you can select the path value like so. So let's try this out. So I'm going to run this server, and in another tab, I'm going to curl this. So if I hit enter, we should get the user ID 1, 2, 3. And if we try with a different user ID, you should get that user ID as well. So this is working. Now, we just used a GET request, and another thing that is new is the declarative methods that you can add here on the URL. So before, you would need to do something like this. So let's imagine this was your handler. So what you'd need to do before with the net HTTP is that you need to manually check the method and then use the appropriate handler requests. But now what we can do is if we check the documentation, is that the pattern is something like this. So it's going to be the method a white space, and then the host and the path. We already have this part. So what you can do here is add, for example, the get, a post. You could also do delete and all of those methods. So this is going to be a get. Actually, let's make this a post just to show you that this is going to be a get. So if we do the example before, this is going to fail because this method does not exist. But if we change this to a get, and as you can see, we get the user ID. So this is, in my opinion, a very, very good addition to the library. And I should also mention, if you didn't read here the documentation, that 
if you don't specify the method it's going to act as a catch all so for example in this case here i have decided to make this a delete and then here below i have made this catch all so it doesn't have a method here and if we run the server again you can see that we are landing at the catch all because we're doing a get request if we did the post it would be the same thing also note that any additional spaces after the method is going to make this unusable. So if we try again and make a get request, we can see that we get the 404 because the package probably doesn't understand. So we need to make sure that we have just one space here on the documentation. They even added this white space. So just to be clear, and hopefully that saves you some hours from debugging. Now, what about middlewares? And to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of middlewares. I like to keep things more declarative and maybe because of my war histories with debugging Express.js applications that made me dislike it even more, but they can definitely still be useful when used sparingly. For example, simple loggers or uh, require authentication middleware might be useful. So let's try and build them into our API here. So let's start by implementing a simple request to logger that prints out the request URL and the method when a user makes a request to our server. We need to return a handler func, so let's do that. And just before I forget, let me call the next function with the server HTTP. And here, let's do the log.printf. I'm going to say the methods is going to be the path, which are coming from the request.method at the request.url.path, I think. So let's try it out. So here we wrap our router with the middleware, like so. And let's try that out. And here I'm going to make the request for the users again. And if we check our server, we should have here a request log. So the method get on this path. And if you make another request, it should have a new log here. And we have it. So this is how you could just make a simple middleware. So very simple. But what about combining this middleware with another one? So let's say that we want to authenticate this route. So only authenticated users that have an authorization token, for example, uh, JWT or something like that can access this endpoint. So let me first create the um, required authentication middleware. And just like the above, it's going to require the HTTP.handler and it's going to return a handler func. So the first thing we need to do is check if the user is authenticated. So let's get the token from the request, for example. Let's get the header dot get. It's going to be the authorization. By the way, I have a complete video course on how to build a RESTful API. I'm going to leave in the description below. There we use authentication and we implement our own JWT if you're interested. And here I'm just going to make a very simple check. So if the token doesn't look like this, we can just say that the user is not authenticated because it doesn't make sense for us to implement here complete authentication. And here I'm just going to say for the user that he's unauthorized and return from the middleware. If he's authenticated, then we can just call the next.servertp. Now, how can we combine this middleware with this one? We can do it like this, so we can wrap the other middleware. But if you're thinking what I'm thinking, this is ugly as hell, so let's do something better. But let's just try it out and see if it works. So here I just started the server and let's do a curl. And we get an authorized request because we don't have the header. So we're pretty sure that this is working, but let me try again and do with the bearer token. Users search 42. So here is the request that I'm passing the bearer token like so in the header of the authorization. So let's hit enter. That's this code is extra. And if we hit enter, we get the user ID 42. So we know that we are dedicated. Now, if you were to add here a modern middleware, I would probably start to get crazy at looking at this. So, uh, let's implement something else. So, what I'm thinking here is that we can make a type called middleware, and it's going to be the signature. So, let's just copy. We don't need here a name. And here we need to put a function, and this is how we are defining any middleware. Then, here let's create our function called middleware um, chain, and it's going to receive all of the middlewares. Instead, it's going to be like so, and we return a middleware at the end. So this is going to return a function as well, which is going to be, I'm going to call this next. I'm going to loop over all of the middlewares from the end to the first one, because the order matters, just like so. And then we call the next, 
And at the end, all we need to do is call the next.surf HTTP. Now let's go ahead and consume this in our routers. It's going to look something like this. We pass in here the middlewares, for example, the log middleware, and we call in the router here. Now I'm going to split this into two variables because usually I don't like to have these multiple calls. So I'm going to call this the chain. And then here, what you need to do is call this chain or maybe a proper name could be middleware chain. And then let's also put the other request, otherwise this wouldn't make sense to create, just like so. And now let's go ahead and test this. So I'm gonna curl the request again with the user ID 42 and I'm authenticated. So we pass and here we got the log as well. So let's try a new request that I'm not authenticated and I'm unauthorized, and I can see that we also have the log. So let's do a quick experiment. What I'm going to do is, because of the way we build this, the order matters, so any times you do this, the order would have to matter, because some middleware return, and if we change the order to the logger to be the second one here, what's going to happen is that this is not going to be called, so let's go and try this, and if I curl this request that is not authenticated, we should not have any logs, as you can see. So yeah, I need to know what you are doing here and the others, of course, matters. Now, something that I like to do in my APIs is to add the subroutes with the prefix slash API slash v1, for example. And the way that we can achieve this here is that we can, for example, create a new router. So let's just do an HTTP dot new max router. Then all we need to do here is just handle here with the prefix, so it's going to be slash API, slash v1, and a slash at the end, because here we're going to do a strip prefix with the slash API, slash v1, and then we pass the router, so the request is going to be sent to the router, so it's going to read this here, and going to pass to the next one, and if we try again our requests, we can do API, slash v1, slash users, and we get the response as well. So this is how we can do subrouting with the net HTTP. And as you guys can see, this is the implementation of some very simple API. So I think this is very doable in bigger projects. And if you have the need to add the dependency, you can later add it. But I would say that you could start with this. So let me know what you guys think about these new changes. And are you going to be using this in your new projects or not? And if you liked the video, let me know by giving a thumbs up and consider subscribing as well. I have in the description below the Discord server, so if you want to join and learn more about Golang and other languages, you can join us there. And with that, see you on the next one.